Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners. And welcome back to another special season break episode of The Fire Pit. I'm Tom, British name Thompson, and we're back with another episode. And this time, it's personal, because it features you, the fans, and maybe some bots. Mostly bots. But as per the rules, we've taken a podcaster from the last episode and moved them to this one. And now to tell us what we're doing and why we're doing this, I turn things over to Nigel. Wait, is that legal? Our lawyer has told us not to answer that question. Yes. Thank you, Thompson. Nigel here, American name Dan. And last week, we decided to take a break from between seasons and record something a little bit different before we strike out on our next journey for the start of season two. And to give us a rundown of what we're exactly we're going to get into tonight, I'm going to turn things over to Josh. And yes, Josh, it's legal. You know, I'm disappointed in you guys. You totally missed the line saying I will make it legal. Come on. Star Wars, guys. Seriously. I'm sorry. I'm a superior Trek fan. And we accept you guys for that. But thank you, Dan. Josh here, British name Reginald. And tonight is the first ever Fire Pit Q&A. We have been uh, asking for questions, begging for questions, and guilt tripping our uh, Discord members for questions. But uh, anywho, we got a lot of feedback, so we thank each and every one of you guys who asked a question. And special thanks to a lot of you who asked multiple questions, not you, Tom. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and answer as many of these questions as we can. Now, I just want to preface this. By saying we did get a lot of questions from multiple sources that were repeat questions. So we uh, are going ahead and just kind of group them together and ask crediting you as necessary. But we'll give shout outs to everybody who asked a question at the end of the episode. So again, thank you. It means a lot to us that you uh, do enjoy our episodes and you are willing to contribute in this way. So um, I guess I'll go ahead and start off our first question. Um, How do you choose your destination movies? Black magic usually involves some sort of um, uh, sacrifice. Um, Not saying it involves human sacrifice all the time. Okay, to answer the question realistically, um, most of the time our destination films have had something to do with the time of the year we're releasing it. Um, Jaws, for example, was released um, because it's a it was the first of the summer blockbuster films, so we wanted to do something with summer. Independence Day was because it was literally the episode was going to release on Independence Day. Also the same reason why Groundhog's Day was chosen as a destination because the episode was going to release on Groundhog's Day. Yeah, Groundhog has the distinction of being the only uh, movie to be released named after the holiday it was released on. Yeah, we recorded Independence Day on Independence Day. Yeah, but Groundhog Day was the one that was... We didn't record on Groundhog Day, but it was released on Groundhog Day. Right, and then like uh, um, all of our other destination films are picked for kind of the same reasons. We did uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington because it was going to fall around election time. Uh, We did Superman because... it was a December release and it was an anniversary of that film. I think is why we did it. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, And then uh, it, the reason why we did it was because it chapter one was the highest grossing movie in September. I think is why we chose it. Yeah. That's usually how we choose our destination film. Oh, or, or it might even be a date in the movie. So it might be like the movie mentions, you know, something, something happening on this particular day. We should release a movie that comes out around then. And then, we're not released. We don't release the movie. We should, we review the movie on such and such date. Yeah. Like we've actually got a schedule of all of our journeys and all of our episodes um, when they're tentatively going to be recorded, when they're tentatively going to be released through like the end of season three. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have filled in some of those blanks, but the majority of them are still empty. And like we had a different uh, journey picked for our, this uh, one that we just finished. But uh, when I saw that, uh, when I built the schedule and I saw that it landed on Groundhog Day, I'm like, guys, it has been written by the gods. Right. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. We should definitely, we'd be kicking ourselves if we don't release this on Groundhog or release Groundhog's Day on Groundhog Day. Um, I would have kicked you guys if we hadn't done that because you know my affection for that film. Yeah. So that's, um, 
that's usually how we pick our destination films. So I guess you can kind well, I mean, you're, you're, you're not gonna be able to accurately predict which movies we're going to do, but if you um, look at some of the times of the year, you might get an idea of what we might pick. Um, if you, count out six weeks from our last destination this year yeah in particular it's got we got some options for yeah. some destinations yeah. i was we i was going through the guys like guys 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 2021 is a lot of anniversaries right. oh and, my god uh one that i'm really 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 looking forward to is <laughs> like that we're actually going to release that episode right around Yes. So, so follow up question: uh, Would you guys ever consider doing a bad film for a destination film? I would have to depend. What's your definition of bad film? Because there's one I'd love us to do if we I'm ever. I'm not get actually to asking the question, Tom. I'm only because everyone else has done them to death, and they've done them much better than we can. I don't want to do the bad, bad, bad fan films. I don't want to do like Samurai Cop because some of them, well. They're so bad they have actors that no one's ever heard of, and they'd be hard to either get to or get out of. Um, and so, but if we were to do like a good bad film, like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or Super Mario Brothers or, oh God, I just rattled off three games based on movies. Um, to break away from that, I'm really trying to push the guys to do Hard Ticket to Hawaii. I was going to say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it would have to be sentimental of a bad, bad yeah. film. My car ticket to Hawaii. Yeah, or if it's like a, a movie that has like kind of, it start, it's, it's a bad film, but it's kind of become a cult classic, you know? Uh, you know, like Friday the 13th or, um, you know, some of those types of movies. Like, they're bad films, but they've become iconic sometimes because they're bad. I, I'm not saying they're not off the table. I'm just saying we haven't done one yet. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't, Say I won't say no that we will never pick a bad film for our destiny. All right, but a, a tangent to that tangent sub or sub to sub question there is there a movie or movies that are absolutely just like no, absolutely not, not even if we got paid you know Bezos money. Uh, well, no, 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 no. I, Jeff Bezos money, I'll watch whatever the fuck he wants to watch. Like if he pays us whatever he makes, I'll watch anything. It's How RC Cola. That Dan will turn down anything for. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. But, I mean, I don't know. Call back to the Green Mile episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I could probably, if a billion dollars came my way, I would drink that road tar. Absolutely. But would you smile while doing it? <laughs> I could just see it. He, he takes the drink. He looks to the camera. He's like barely holding his mouth together and his teeth are all like black and nasty. And it's like oozing out the side. RC Cola. <laughs> it's delicious it's almost like that episode of uh the simpsons where crusty was doing his own commercial for crusty burger and he takes a bite and he goes mm, and then they go cut and he spits it out and he goes oh god i think i swallowed some of the juice and he picks up like a bottle of scotch and just downs it <laughs> but yeah so. but is there is, are there movie or movies out there that you're just like no guys absolutely not no i don't want to say no there's movies i'm definitely not in a hurry to get to like i'll never say no to Die Hard Five, I think it would live free or not live free. A uh, good day to Die Hard. Like I, I won't say no to it if it fits the destination, like Journey. But I'm not in a hurry to get to that film. Um, that would but, never be a destination film. Let's put it no, 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 no. But I mean, if like we were doing lists and one of you presented a list that had that movie on it, I'd it would like, just be like a, a movie that we'd watch, but not never a destination film. Yeah, I'm not gonna go out of my way to get to it. Like I would say for the podcast, Debbie does Dallas Five. I just. I, I probably wouldn't do that one. Yeah, they're really phoning it in by the fifth one. You can tell. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, porn movies are something we're not going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really don't. Like I said, I really, I don't mind doing bad films like Star Wars Episode One or or even Mario Brothers or something like that. But I don't want to do like the bad, 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 bad films. I don't want to do Samurai Cop. Not because it's it's not hilarious to watch together. It is hilarious to watch together. It's just that everyone does that movie, and it's just like. I don't want to do those movies because they're they're just they're really hard to get to and get out of. But yeah, to answer your question, Tom, no, there's there's not. We're we're pretty big whores when it comes to watching films. I do have one movie that is an absolute standard. Of course you do. Paul Blart Mall Cop. I it's refuse oh <laughs> on principle to watch that film. Ever. I am gonna make a point to do that on our next journey. And I will be sick and probably <laughs> dead. Yep, on that I episode, I've got to go revise some of my lists. All right. So, if anyone out there 
who listens to this, who really likes Paul Blart Mall Cop, I'm sorry, we're probably not going to do it any time in the near future. Or maybe even the far future, if Tom has anything to say. We're totally going to watch Paul Blart Mall Cop. It's funny if like, we record that episode and then Tom just edits it and it's all just dead air. It's like, <laughs> it's nothing Tom, going Tom's on. like, um, I'm the editor, so I sent the guys a proof of the actual episode. Yeah, the final thoughts are just... It's, it's actually the entire episode is Tom just ranting about it for an hour. Um... Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's go see if I can pull another question out of the hat here. Danielle on Discord asked this one. Uh, how long does it take to put together a whole episode? What's the process? Well, I mean, if you're talking like whole episode from like writing Yeah, I think that's what she's going for. Like, Typically, we create a script. We have a template we pull from. And then we figure out who, which we have a set order of who's going to go in which order. Who does the intro, the connections, the rundown, and we follow that um, order. Just it's kind of for us. I don't know if you guys pick up on it, but uh, you probably do. You're all smart. And, and then we usually go through, and either one of us will write the uh, uh, cold open. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Dan will usually write the. Uh, well, Dan always writes the intro, the connection, and the rundown. And then uh, one of us will usually write the uh, cold open, interspersal, and stinger. However, recently we've been doing ampersand writing sessions to where we'll get together and we'll have air quotes table reads where um, we will read the cold open and add notes and make stuff. But we've been writing them on our table read sessions and then reading them and uh, usually takes a few hours. It's a lot of fun. We've found that we really enjoy doing it, but we always, we always have the episode we're working on it, the script at least leading up into the episode. And then Friday night comes or Saturday night, depending. And then uh, we get online. We wait for Tom to get on after about an hour. (laughs) He's not exaggerating. I, I wish I could not, say it's a joke, not. but work, that happens. Because for some reason, Tom always has work on the nights we record. So we get on the line about 8, and about 10.30, we start recording the episode. Seriously, me and Dan will watch, like, when uh, Star Trek... Uh, Lower, Lower Decks, Decks we were watching on, Lower Decks. We would watch two or three episodes of Lower Decks waiting for Tom. But uh, <laughs> then we'd, we'd get on, we'd record our skit, and then we would record in, our intro connections and rundown give our thoughts those are unscripted the thoughts the our uh expectations and final thoughts are unscripted watch the movie um final thoughts and then we done and then we hand it off to tom and then tom just does his magic and by monday or tuesday we start reviewing the episode for release on tuesday yeah tom edits him usually gets a rough uh cut uh together by late monday afternoon or monday evening Sets it uh, for Josh and I to listen to. Uh, Josh has had a much better editor ear than I do. So he'll point out, uh, hey, uh, do this, tweak this, uh, cut this out or whatever. And him and then Tom says no. And they fight about it. And I watch them fight. And uh, and then the episode gets released. Um, and we don't talk to each other again until it's time to do table reads. Because that's usually how long it takes for the two of them to cool off. So <laughs> Every week. <laughs> That one time we were arguing about the script, and Dan's like, "My phone has been blowing up all oh my God. day. I'm in training, guys. Get therapy." Well, what the, yeah, I know. It's like I was in training, and I'm like, I cannot look at my phone. And then, like, my phone's going, uh, 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 uh. and my boss goes, "My new boss." And I'm only like two weeks into this job. My boss goes, "Do you want? Do you need to get that?" And I'm like, "No." Like, I know what this is, and I want no part of it. It's a Monday. You'll understand the reviewing the episode. Mommy and Daddy are having another fight. Oh, my God. And I I just look at it, and I mean, you know, I got the chat head bubble for – we use Facebook Messenger to talk amongst each other. And I got the chat head bubbles up, and there's 26 new messages on there. And I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) And and to add insult to injury – Tom is he gets very involved in work and he lets work emotions bleed over in the yes. writing session. So it's like I'm trying to be as passive as I can while being right. like, You didn't edit this right, so my script doesn't flow like I want it to. And then Tom's <laughs> yeah. like, I don't give a shit what you think. Yeah. I'm the and editor, Tom, bitch. Oh, and then like Tom pulls a <laughs> Tom pulls a, a gumby from Saturday Night Live, Eddie Murphy's gumby from Saturday Night Live yelling at Joe Piscopo. Going, you do not work with me. You work for me. And just like, well, fuck. <laughs> I guess the edit, the episode's going out as it is. So then it always ends the same way. Josh signs out of Facebook for a little while. Um, I continue working my shift quietly. 
Uh, and then we don't speak until I think Tom sends us a message on Wednesday saying, hey, are we still good for table read on Thursday? <laughs> So it's a miracle. Good. I mean, we've made it to episode forty-eight. Yeah, it's 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 a process. It's a process. Um, so uh, yeah. Um, moving on. Yeah, sub question: uh, What are some of the more challenging aspects of making this podcast? We answered every one of those. So <laughs> ego, um, ego is definitely. <laughs> yeah, we've we've learned to set aside our egos. All joking aside, we've learned to set aside our egos and say, hey. We need to do we do this we do this this yeah. and we we we've we, all three of us been really proud of how the podcast mm-hmm. has come along. Yeah, yeah. yeah we but definitely I, did have egos starting out, um, and there was there was some butting of heads as we had creative differences. But we've got I think we've gotten to the point where we're really good at working together, and mm-hmm. uh, we we're all equally like uh, I think the term that we use common most commonly now is uh, this isn't a hill I want to die on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you think it would be that much? Headbutting and drama on a podcast is essentially about three guys watching movies and talking about them. Yeah, I've got a question that actually goes back to we didn't answer it in the last episode with the origins of the fire pit, the origins of the podcast. But someone, uh, Tony, asked this: Where did the British names come from, and why do you use them even if you don't speak in British accents? Well, we're actually British. Um, I'm from Westchester. Um, Dan's from Edinburgh. Um, actually, Reginald's from Edin- Edinburgh. No, I'm from Barry St. Edmunds. Um, but uh, we're actually practicing. We're practicing right, an American accent. It's what we do. We practice our accents. Um, the thing about it is, uh, we aren't really American, so you know how it is. You know, I have actual English friends that listen to this, and they're going to absolutely <laughs> roast me when they hear Unlike this. Unlike you guys, I've actually lived in England. <laughs> and that's your best English accent? You should be ashamed of yourself, Sounds Josh. like Donna's English accent. I am not particularly proud of it. And it hurt while I was doing it. <laughs> I'm a noisy dunksley. <laughs> so to uh, Nigel's English friends, I am so sorry. English friends aside, and I'll understand if you want to remove me from the server now. Uh, our British names actually started with Tom and I in high school, long time ago, in the before time, in the long, long ago. Like we didn't even have cell phones back then, kid. So um, we, Tom and I, uh, you know, at high school and, and dumb shit, but we were really big into Monty Python at the time. Like we had, we had just discovered it. Yes, it was twenty some odd years old by that point, but we had just discovered Monty Python, and it was the most amazing thing ever. And so we were quoting like Monty Python, the Holy Grail, and Life of Brian, like all the time. And we were watching the British version of Whose Line Is It Anyways, and just like I think Tom and I just started the the British accent stuff with the name Thompson and the name Nigel. And then that kind of like spiraled out. And Tom, feel free to chime in if I'm missing some details. But we oh, you're we missing started... one or two details because it wasn't just that we liked the whose line is it anyways and Monty Python and the Holy Grail and um, flying circuits and such. Um, at the same time, I was like getting into writing skits and scripts right. and all that. So, and we had like briefly came up with the idea for a comedy troop series like monty python and we had a whole bunch of skits written in like nigel and i would just talk back and forth and come up with ideas for scripts um the the chef that puts rat poison in food um, oh and the, the, oh my god the um uh we all know going downstairs leads to death so we'll go we were playing yeah, because we were yeah. playing um, Castle, um, Castlevania. Castlevania. Yeah, we like <laughs> every time we go, we kept going upstairs and dying. So we we're like, we all know that going upstairs leads yeah. to death. So we'll go downstairs. Yeah, so then downstairs led to death too. And then that we we're like, well, we all know going downstairs. So then like the British guy goes, well, we'll just stay here then, you know. And you're like, yes, brilliant. Um, and also at the time, the Guinness commercials were popular. The whole brilliant, brilliant. So we were doing that all the time, and. We named ourselves like Thompson and Nigel and then some of our other friends, including Danielle on Discord, had a British name as well. And that became the um, uh, you had to earn your British name. You didn't just get one becoming a friend. You had to earn your British name. And so then uh, late in our friendship, Josh joins our troop. Because contrary to popular belief. I did not, in fact, go to grade school with these yeah. two. Josh is actually our checkoff. Um, Josh has been with us for so long, we can't actually imagine when Josh wasn't our friend, but he wasn't in season one, and we keep forgetting that. <laughs> not of the podcast. I was definitely in season one of the podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> but he wasn't in season one of our friendship. And 
so but we keep forgetting that you know we'll, we'll be we'll be telling a story about high school and josh always like i wasn't there like oh yeah <laughs> so um but josh joins our group and then he eventually gets the british name reginald i don't know how that came i think it came during a fire pit no no it was actually when uh me you and tom had a uh i think it was at lucky's and uh i didn't earn it i was like guys my british name is reginald and you're like oh that's awesome yeah but either way we, you got <laughs> you got the the reginald name yeah. and so um that that's how the, that's where the british names come from and the whole uh, i'm dan british name nigel i'm tom british name thompson i'm josh british name reginald the reason why i script that in every episode is actually a callback to tom and i's skits way back in high school that's just it's a callback to 20 some odd years of just fuckery <laughs> so, yeah it's our inside joke but we're letting you in on it. Also, we do tend to call each other by those names. So it's good to let people know this is what we call ourselves. Yeah. Um, it's not just weird. Right. Well, it's still weird. So, so here, here is a uh, recreation of me calling Tom. Ring, 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 ring. Yo, hoy, hoy. Tom ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> I feel like it's a good question. Uh, Peggy, to tangent off that, asked, uh, "What's what's the origin? What was the origin? What was the best story of you meeting us, Josh? How did you meet us?" Well, that was fun. Um, Tom, I, I uh, got off active duty of the Air Force. I was stationed down in Louisiana, and I had the choice of going to Ohio or back home to Kansas. And if anyone's listened to the podcast, they'll know what choice he made. I chose Ohio for obvious <laughs> reasons. So. Um, yeah, so I, we ended up coming up there. I got a job on base here, and I, uh, well, my cube mate sitting right next to me at this first job that I got was Tom, and uh, we worked together for about a year, and it took us about a month or two just idly talking um, to realize that we both had a love of movies. So we went on our first mandate to see Tom. Do you remember? Do you remember it? I think it was My Bloody Valentine. My Bloody Valentine 3D. Yes. So that was our first mandate. Um, clearly, he called me back. <laughs> but uh, no, we started hanging out after that. We started a game. We called it the drum roll, which we would try to predict the box office uh, results of that weekend. It evolved to this whole thing that eventually sputtered out. But then Tom introduced me to his other best friend. Well, I wasn't a best friend at the time, I would say, but his best friend, Nigel. And then me and Dan slowly spent years trying to cut Tom out. <laughs> and um, Right. It got so bad I had to move to a whole other city. It was oh, change my name. Yeah. It's a whole to do. Yeah. I remember, I think it was a game night. Like you were having a board game night. That was the first time I ever came over there and to your house. And I mean, we just, we hit it off right away. Just like and within like months I was hanging out with you and it felt like we'd been friends for years. So it was yeah. like, yeah, that's why, like I said, I literally call you our checkoff because it's just like, I can't imagine when I wasn't friends with you. But then you're like, I look back at like my high school pictures or stuff like that. And I already get tagged in something that when I was in high school or just graduated high school or something, I'm like, where's Josh in this picture? Oh yeah. I haven't met him yet. <laughs> like, same with like my wedding photos. When I look at my wedding photos and you're not there, I'm like, where the hell's Josh? Why didn't I make him a groomsman? Why am I an asshole? Oh, I hadn't met him yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> I had canon that he's the guy holding the camera in all those pictures. <laughs> That's good. That's a good head canon. I know it is funny, though. I mean, us being friends with Josh all stands back to me being the back of line in first grade behind a kid with a cool ass Superman book bag. Like, that book bag's cool. Yes. It was, but that it kid was looks awesome. angry. I don't know if I'm going to like being his friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dan and I go back to grade school. Yeah, I've those... been friends since first or second grade. I mean, mm -hmm. and we, we bonded over, no, it was second grade because you and I bonded over both thy Superman backpack and the fact that we bonded over the Batman movie because the Batman movie came out the summer before we went to second grade. Mm -hmm. And so we. And also, you had a Nintendo, and at the time, I didn't have one. Right. So, friendship through convenience. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, Tom and I have been friends since grade school, and then we added Josh into our 20s. And it's been that way ever since. And the three of us are inseparable. I mean, we live in different cities, but we're still inseparable. My wife actually jokes all the time. One day you'll love me like you love Tom and Josh. And then she's like, no, <laughs> never mind. That's a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're the bridge crew. We've um, been the bridge crew for 
decade now. Holy cow. I mean, our friendship, Josh, uh, is the same age as your daughter. Um, so yeah, you know, actually, it's uh, six months older than my daughter. Yeah. And she just turned 12 last year. <laughs> but mine and Josh's friendship is almost the same age as my daughter, because my daughter was only, only a month or two old when I met Josh. Yep. Um, and our so, daughters are, incidentally, really good friends. Yeah, they're, they're having a sleepover uh, right uh, now. Shocker of shocks. You're forced to be friends with this person because he's my best friend. Hang out. <laughs> you will be friends. You will like it. Yeah. Love each other. But yeah, that's the origins of our friendship. It's not as glamorous as falling into a vat of ooze or something like that. But that's how it came to be. Oh, it's still yeah, early. I mean, involved, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could still happen. I yeah. mean, I'm not I, I think out. it's kind of amazing. I mean, like I said, the fact that Tom and I have been friends since grade school. Josh has been our friend for, you know, 11, 12 years now. And it's showing no signs of slowing down you know now we got this podcast together so um, although there was a few episodes ago where uh, it was on the rocks that would be yes <laughs> <laughs> that would be the aforementioned 26 new messages on my phone <laughs> my boss it was never on the rocks our friendship it wasn't, was it no that's we were just <laughs> i'm not gonna lie one of the questions is asked one of our some of our earlier sins that we wish we had known about I, not just including like the podcast equipment i wish i had known how to separate work mode tom from podcast mode tom yeah. in the beginning. That's yeah. my sin. Holy cow. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, I was kind of whiny and, and, and pissy some of our early episodes too, because I had just lost my job for because of the pandemic. So I was feeling pretty depressed. And all of a sudden I write like a cold open and Josh goes and edits the whole thing. I'm like, well, fuck you too. <laughs> Why don't you guys just say I'm not talented and you just don't want me to record the podcast with you. And I was like, Dan, get a Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, moving on from the origins of this yes. trifecta. So let, let's move on to another question. So uh, Tarek Thorne on Discord asks, what are your favorite TV shows? And have you ever thought of spinning a destination through a TV show, TV series? Hmm. Like a, like a side series, like a spinoff where we do this only with TV shows? Well, it says spinning a destination. Well, I so. mean, my favorite TV series or TV shows, uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a movie about a bunch of astronauts on a trek through the stars um so they're on some kind of star trek yeah i think it's Battlestar wars star wars mandalorian something like that yeah it's, it's one of those um no I, obviously star trek's one of my favorite shows of all time all of them mm. uh well except for the most recent season of discovery but um and picard <laughs> let's put it like this we conceived this as like a version of the podcast like if we ever get to the point where we're pipe dream we can this be our full-time job we don't ever actually expect that to happen um, we would love to have multiple podcasts doing multiple things like this, this is the fire pit like the friday episodes are our movie episodes the tuesday episodes is our tv show episodes and we've thought about doing that um yeah so but it's a lot of work right now and yeah the we can barely us, do one episode a week yeah the three of us have families and significant others and jobs and you know we just don't have time you know we barely have the time to record the one episode a week so mm. um, now if we ever ma start making money on this i mean significantly enough that it's like it becomes our day job then maybe we could do that like yeah. um a trek through the trek or something along those lines because i know we've uh like we've me and dan like waiting for tom to get on we've actually recorded a couple of air quotes episodes of it but they were garbage and because it's mostly I'm like, shut up, Josh. I'm trying to watch this. <laughs> God, I'm like, I've never seen, I haven't seen this episode yet. Be quiet. Um, That's probably another reason why we couldn't do that. It'd have to be like a lousy show that we're okay with just blasting yeah. the whole um, time. But to, Tarek, to answer your first part of that question is what's our favorite TV show? The answer is obviously Scrubs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm totally the Turk in this group. Dan's the Carla. You are totally not Turk. You're more of the janitor. No, I'm okay with that. I got one here from Danielle. She asks, um, would we ever consider laying out our paths to the destinations and letting the listeners choose the winners? Um, that's actually something we've chatted about in yeah. the background. But... Short answer right now is no. Long answer is yes. We did. That is something we want to do eventually. Um, we just haven't figured out a way to do it yet um, mm -hmm. yeah, we'd love to have mm -hmm. like a uh like a poll type thing to where everybody could vote on the next episode we're gonna watch 
Mm -hmm. um getting to the destination like we'll pick like we'll pick like a list of 10 movies and then all of our viewers or people on discords twitter or whatever would vote on whichever one would go mm -hmm. and you guys just all pick my uh paths anyways because come on i come up with the best ones that's why we went with mine three times but okay moving on <laughs> uh another question here um are there any films that you know the others haven't seen that you are dying to make others watch kind of like how tom was feeling about josh and i watching life aquatic or i was feeling with you guys watching explorers which good choice I, i'm not gonna lie i loved watching that film with you guys josh that was a gem uh, there's a movie i would love to get to someday it's got a lot of actors in it so it wouldn't be hard a movie to get to it's just a long effing movie which means it'd have to be a two-part episode because it's a four-hour movie oh uh, you're talking the civil war movie yeah, gettysburg you? i would love to watch gettysburg with you guys it's a great film it is fantastic the acting is superb the the, the fact that they used actual civil war reenactors as the extras like there's so much about that movie i love i would love to watch it with you guys but it's four hours long if you'd have to do it in two episodes there's no way We'd be, oh, yeah, yeah. We wouldn't get done recording till like 5 a.m. But man, would that ever, that would be a good one. Cause I've wanted to watch some of the classics with you guys. Actually, Just like go a, back. That's a 90s film, the Gettysburg movie. But, but it's still a classic. I mean, some of these, like, um, I've never seen um, Dances with Wolves, but if that wound up on a list, that, I mean, that's one of those ones. Yeah, but no, that's not the one I'd want to watch with you guys. Uh, for me, a film I would love to watch with you guys just because it's so 90s. Um, but it's one of those ones that has to fall on the date. Empire Records. Yeah. It's I've actually seen never seen movie, it. Though. I've never seen it. I have. I, it's, uh, it's been years, but I, I have seen it. I've got some rather obscure ones. The Lobster I would love to watch with you guys just because I know – it's gonna hurt you both oh 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 flash gordon that's another one i would love to watch with you guys because i've never seen it and it's just got that cheese factor to it I, it could be the worst film we've ever seen or it could be the most fun mm. film we've ever seen but it's not gonna be a good film okay what's what's a movie for you josh what's a movie that you don't you think john and i haven't seen that you would love to get us to watch I don't know. Have you guys seen Rockstar? Yes, I yes. love Rockstar. Yeah, so is that the one with Mark Wahlberg being? Yeah, it's actually based on a true story. It's based on the it guy is. who I love, the I love that movie. It's like, I know you guys have seen Count of Monte Cristo. No, you've seen Fight Club. Oh yes, yes. Um, God, yeah, I can't think of anything right out the gate. What I'm thinking of right now, chat. So no, I, I don't have anything this that I can. Yeah, comes to not any mind, but I mean, that's usually when we come to the list. Um when we're revealing our list during a selection section episode, one of us will say a movie. And if the other two go, Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Then you start to you pump, your, you pump your list up a little bit. You're like, Oh, this is, you know, you guys definitely need to see this film. Yeah. That was cool. Hand Luke for me is like, I really wanted to see that one. So I was really glad we picked the list that had that on there. Although the list was depressing in the yeah. end, but uh, I really enjoyed that list. Yeah. Oh, almost all of those cool hand. Luke was one of those that was on my list of movies. I hoped you guys would eventually see that. And, um, uh, Life Aquatic and uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. That's one I've been trying to get friends to watch for years, and no, no one's ever really been able to watch it with me. Uh, and you guys were able to do it, and I'm sorry it was such a depressing time in history that yeah. we saw it, but I was glad I got to watch it with you. No, they'll say that, that was a lot of fun to get to. Yeah. Um, I know one movie that I really hope uh, I would like to introduce you guys to that I don't think you've seen. Is uh, a little known film came out in the eighties called Back to the Future. Never heard of it. Back, back to the what? Why would you want to go back to? How can you go back to the future? It's it's I I, I know it's I I've mentioned it a couple of times, only a couple, but uh, I, I would like to watch that movie. It sounds stupid. Absolutely not. You know what? To answer the question, are there any movies you don't ever want to do? I'm going to put Back to the Future on the list. The title alone sounds stupid. Yeah, that's just. I mean, the grammar alone just pass hard pass makes my head hurt and the fact that it's an 80s film i mean now you're gonna tell me it's a classic right it is a classic <laughs> <I'm He's crying>. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay <sighs> josh i'm pretty sure we're gonna get to back to the future someday <laughs> yes that's a destination for sure i mean that yeah, yeah that's definitely at, at some point so it's like we're, we're dropping hints here people can, can, can you figure them all out we, we didn't really organize it. So um, I have a question from uh, my coworker, Nick, who asks, 
Is it inappropriate to call my balls Siskel and Ebert? Yes. Wow. Okay. We must be getting to the bottom of the questions now. Yes, it is. But it's still hilarious. It's inappropriate, but it's hilarious. I'll uh, allow this one, it. Uh, this one comes from Danielle. Would you guys consider having guests on the show? Yes. Yes. And fun fact, uh, we are actually going to have a special guest on our uh, destination film for our destination for our first journey uh, next season. Season two, journey one. We're pumped. Um, we haven't had any guests on yet. Um, we're working on it. I think We've had closest, cameos. Yeah, a the cameo. closest we had was Peggy, friend of the channel, recorded some lines for us during the uh, Whistle Stop campaign trail. And she did it for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because there was no way any three of us could mask our voice enough so that it would sound like someone completely different winning the um, election. So we, we needed some help. And also we thought it would be a cool twist that we keep mentioning Peggy and Peggy's the one that wins the election. So mm -hmm. even uh, though she did have... not campaign whatsoever. Yeah. So, you know, we would, we definitely want to have guests on at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of like films that we've been looking at, or we hope to get to uh, at some point that we know who we'd want to, you know, guest star, you know, comment on with us. But again, we need to get there at some point and what but, but we do, we'll tap them on the shoulder and be like, what up? You thinking about this? So yeah, we'll see. So short answer, yes. But um, Peggy asks, if you were a red shirt on Star Trek, how would you die on your away mission? Oh my God. That TOS, that the original series episode where that red shirt dies by sniffing the flower and the flower ends up shooting bullets in his chest. <laughs> what? That's me. That's me. That's me. I'm the dumbass red shirt that sniffs a flower and then the flower just shoots like darts or bullets or something. And kills me. Dude, this episode, I can't remember the name of the episode. Oh my God, I can't remember the name of the episode. But that episode, they, calendars, folks. That episode is a mother effing bloodbath. Like six red shirts die in that episode. Kirk beams up alone, I'm pretty sure. Like, was it that the away team? Well, no, that was like shore leave, wasn't it? it? I can't remember, but I just remember that the, 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 I remember the red shirt going, there was like a flower, like singing or something. And he goes to sniff it or pick it or look at it. And the damn thing shoots these darts right into his chest. And he just falls over and dies. And, and he looks over at Kirk and he's like, sorry, Captain. And he just falls over to him like, that's me. That's me. That's See, me, I would that's... be the crewmate who was actually like infested with some kind of brain bug. And I went to kill somebody. And then the crew killed me. <laughs> and then immediately afterwards, figure out how to remove the brain bug once it infects one of the bridge crew. I would uh, be arguing with Josh about something. Um, I would say he's wrong about some plant. And he's like, this couldn't have killed Dan. I mean, smell this. It's whack, whack, whack. And so I might have killed by the same plant that killed Dan because I don't want Josh to be right. Yeah. Or I would be the one to do something stupid, like mouth off to a Klingon or something. Like, you know, the Klingon's like, oh, you have no honor. I'm like, your mom has no honor. And <laughs> bat left to the face. Oh, real quick though, um, before we go on, I just want to say, I, I, you know, Peggy, thank you for that question. I also asked that question because now we have our obligatory team uh, talks about Star Trek. Take a drink. You're welcome, people. Speaking of Star Wars, this question or must be asked by Rob on Discord. I don't know who that guy is. However, I heard he makes custom PCs. When are you going to get to a Star Wars or Star Trek movie? Question mark exclamation mark. <laughs> Star Trek movie, eventually. Star Wars movie, never. No, nope, yeah, never. I, hard. That's actually the other one. Yeah. Paul Blart, Mall Cop, and any Star Wars film. Rob, you and I have been best friends for going on 10 years now. We've been friends for a while. Look, Star Wars is kind of like this like underground thing. It's, it's, it's kind of a cleat niche kind of a fan base. There's not that many of you. Not as many as you think there are. Yeah. You know? And if we're going to be brutally honest, it's kind of garbage. I mean, yeah, it's the same it's like, story told over and over again. I mean... Yeah, and, you know, I mean, it... it it's a, it just sounds like something a 10-year-old would write. Laser swords and robot black dude who breathes heavy and guy who throws lightning out of his hands. It's, it sounds like a 10-year-old wrote it. And, and uh, Rob, Rob, I do want to just apologize for these two. Um, they were still had a significant amounts of lead in paint when they were eating <laughs> it on their... Uh, uh, on their cribs, so they would peel it and eat it. Tom still collects them and eats them to this uh, day. Sarcasm is lost on the Star Wars fans in the audience, including the Star Wars fans in the podcast. No, Rob, uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, both movies are definitely 
ones we want to get to. It's um. Are oh wait, you guys are being sarcastic. A little bit. Whoa, yeah, little totally bit. lost on me. I, well, that's not a shock. That's not a shock. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, no, we want to do a Star Wars film or multiple Star Wars films eventually, and we want to do some of the Star Trek movies too. I would, I would love to do Star Trek Two: The Wrath of Khan or Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered Country, especially since uh, God rest his soul, uh, Christopher Plummer died last week, so he was my favorite Klingon movie, Klingon Chang. I mean, I love that movie so uh definitely want to get to a star trek movie and the star wars movies eventually um just uh the only thing i can say is just keep listening trust me we mentioned star wars and star trek every single episode we're going to get to the movies it's almost as near certainty as say back to the future not doing that one josh no three movies we're never gonna do <laughs> keep listening rob we'll get to a star wars movie and a star trek movie eventually yes yes and I, there's one last question I want to ask. Uh, it doesn't say from which user, but I think this was a group one. Where do you see the podcast going from here? To the next episode. To the next episode. No, for real. I, 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 I see a lot of limitless potential. Because if you go for the dark episodes, we've connected Showdown in Little Tokyo all the way to Groundhog Day. I think we have a long way to go. And we still will be going on that route. We are connecting from Groundhog Day to... The first movie of our next uh... destination film. Yes. And you will find out what our next destination film is when we record the selection section episode coming up soon. Yes. Yeah, we're actually going to change the format just a hair. Uh, I hope you don't mind, but the selection section episodes will no longer be a bonus episode on the week. They will be a standard Tuesday release. So next week's episode is going to be released same bat time, same fire pit time, same fire pit channel. Don't get us sued. <laughs> yes on uh tuesdays um but it will be a selection section episode instead of a standard episode so basically journeys now are going to be seven episodes long instead of six yes it's um this uh is a favor to the editor who as good as he's gotten about getting these episodes edited when you have to edit two episodes <laughs> at the same time on top of a nine to five job that's a little more than nine to five yeah, it kind of piles up a bit but on that note, I think it does it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to like and subscribe, as it really does help the podcast out. Be sure to join us on Discord. You know, we're thinking about doing a Q&A section after the next season. So join the Discord, ask the questions, and uh, interact with us and our other fledgling fans. And you can always suggest movie paths, give us some feedback. And please also remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so that you'll always get a notification when the next episode drops. And uh, if you want to reach out to us in the most old school of old school styles, pen and paper, you can't because we don't have an address. But if you want to email us, uh, feel free to uh, shoot us an email at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainment, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I. And he says this way too many times, and it gets incredibly tedious in the interspersal segment. I don't want to close my I'm eyes. the editor, Josh. I, I can do this all day. <laughs> I it, and I don't want to miss a thing. The current call entertainment, INC at gmail.com. Um, if you want to talk, any feedback, suggestions, whatever. Um, and all the links to our email and social media is in this episode's description and at firepit.podbean.com. And to shout out, I would like to thank Danielle for participating and asking the questions that we've answered on this Q&A session. Thank you for the input. Thank you for your input. And special thanks um, to Zencaster. I just want to give them a very special shout out. We yes. almost had a technical difficulty that would have been tragic. But unlike our last recording um, platform, who shall remain nameless, this one was a friend to the channel. So Zencaster, you're not paying us to plug you, but we are going to plug you as often as we can, or at least I am. So thank you very much. Yes, you have increased our your chances of us actually paying you for your services because this is a free service. And oh my God. They saved our ass tonight. Oh, boy, did they ever. So thank you. And for everyone else out there who's been with us since episode one and been with us through now episode 48 and going on, keeping the fire pits burning, words cannot express. Thank you so much from me and everyone. And I'll obviously shout out Peggy, old school friend of the channel, as always. 
Thanks so much for your questions. Thanks so much for your feedback. Thank you so much for your support during the season one, uh, season one uh, of the podcast. Thanks so much. Also, you know, just thanks to everyone who listens. You know, the, both the bots and the listeners. Just thank you. You know, just three guys talking about movies, and you guys listen to it every week. It's awesome. It's a good feeling. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you to you guys. And like a special shout out to everybody who asked questions, you know, Rob, Tyrick Thorne, Peggy, Danielle, Nick, everybody who asked a question. I really appreciate the feedback you guys give, even if we have to force it out of you. But uh, so thank you guys for that. And a special shout out to my wife who puts up with my ass every single week. And when I put my friends first, has to been record an episode. Yes, it has so. been since the actual physical fire pit. And still to this day. Yes. yes. Um, you've got, uh, I'll have to repost it on our Discord, but there is a video of us making a very bad attempt at burning a uh, Christmas tree in July. And it doesn't end very well. And you give the most epic of head shakes at us and our shenanigans. That just sums up our entire relationship. <laughs> True. I'm talking to the three of us. That's our entire relationship, <laughs> not me and the relationship with my wife. No, that the head shake uh, from your wife is her relationship to us. <laughs> yes, our relationship yes, together. Yes. <laughs> thank you for putting up with us, Josh's wife. Yes, thank you. And I love you. But um the last question for tonight, I'm gonna go ahead and do this as our uh, as we progress to the end of this episode, is asked by no other than my wonderful mother. Why do you swear so much? Because we fucking do. <laughs> fucking A. Until next time, I've been fucking Tom. Ooh, I'm sorry. That doesn't sound like fun. Yeah, that's... Oof. God. I, I do want to say, though, I do want to say to Josh's mom, I fucking love you. I really do. You're the best. We fucking love you, Mrs. Josh's mom. Mom, you are the best fucking mom I've ever had. <laughs> She's never going to speak to us again. Until next time, I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I've been Josh. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. Good luck out there.